Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second in our series of Coffee Break webinars, Introducing Credit Hound. Um, this webinar is being recorded, and I would ask that if you have your microphones there, if you would please mute them so we can minimize the level of background noise during the recording. Um, I should point out that this webinar is uh, deliberately quite short, uh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so we have no time for questions at the end, but I will provide a uh, page at the back with my contact details. And you are, of course, very welcome to uh, contact me to ask any follow-up questions that, that you may have. So welcome to um, the uh, second coffee break. And here we are introducing Credit Hound uh, to the Cambridge Online portfolio of uh, add-on products for NAV. Um, it's based around the principle that cash is king um, and good cash flow is essential for successful businesses. Um, as you will all appreciate, giving credit is good for sales, but we do need to have proper tools to collect the cash. The key point about um, Credit Hound is that it's designed to automate and streamline a lot of the administrative processes that are involved behind good credit management. Um, those administrative tasks will be things like running an age debt report, checking incoming payments, chasing up previous calls, and placing accounts on stop, uh, getting reminder letters out there, um, all sort of tedious in a way tasks, but very necessary tasks. Um, and what this has the effect of doing is reducing the sort of quality communication time interaction, if you like, between the credit controller and the customer. And the idea of using Credit Hound is very much to be able to take the 80% admin, 20% uh, contact time, turn it on its head so that we have far more uh, quality time and less uh, administrative time. And the objective at the end of the day, the key benefits at the end of the day, are improved cash flow. The idea of being able to collect payments early, improve the bank balance, uh, reduce the uh, overdraft costs, but importantly, allow the company to have more access to its own capital. Managing and controlling disputes is another key benefit. One of the biggest reasons for non-payment is because either a whole or part of an invoice is disputed, whether it's short delivery, whether it's badly damaged packaging, whatever it might be. Um, it is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the main reasons for non-payment, not just of the disputed amount, but of the entire invoice. By using technology better, um, standard computer scheduling and functionality, um, we can start uh, using and making uh, some of the administrative tasks so much easier to do. In fact, many of them now can be done in the background, including chasing letters, uh, emails, and faxes. And the object of the exercise, too, is to reduce those bad debts, giving the credit controllers and the credit managers more quality time with the customer to understand what's going on better and perhaps make those important decisions to help reduce any bad debt, uh, either today or in the future. So the key features that make this possible are primarily a built-in calendar, um, helping credit controllers and credit managers to understand the next steps, give them all the information that they need, and specific management information, and credit reporting information, not general stuff, but specifically for credit controllers. Highly flexible letter and report designer. Um, Credit Hound can send uh, emails on, uh, as well as faxes, and obviously, if necessary, a hard copy. But generally speaking, we'll try and automate as much as we possibly can. Using the scheduler, uh, using basically various rules and criteria we can set up. We can automate a lot of the letter writing uh, processes um, and to that extent we get to a point where we almost have, for the background stuff, a virtual credit controller. The dispute handling and resolution support is crucial uh, and we will see later on we have a very, very good process for handling those disputes and 
professionally bringing them to a conclusion. Comprehensive communication uh, is crucial here. Uh, most NAV uh, people will use the customer uh, header, uh, the comments field there, or will use the sales invoice header comments functionality for for uh, putting comments. Um, what Credit Hound allows you to do is bring all those comments uh, into one place for the credit controller to be able to to manage properly. And uh, as you would expect, uh, in a NAV environment, uh, multi-user, multi-company, and multi-currency capabilities. And last but not least, of course, it integrates with NAV via the, the uh, SQL Server. So it is crucial that uh, if you wish to use Credit Hound, that you do have the SQL Server uh, capability within NAV. Um, rather than talk about the functionality, um, I'd much rather show it to you. And what we're going to show you is the home page overview for Credit Hound. We're going to very quickly chase a debt, uh, handle a dispute, take you through the uh, Outlook calendar, and show you some of the rules and actions for a virtual credit controller. And within all of that, obviously, you will see uh, quite a bit of Outlook. So here we go. Let's have a look at uh, Credit Hound. And we'll just move to the Credit Hound page. Here is the home page for Credit Hound. Um, very colorful, very well laid out, um, essentially working on the basis that green is good, red is bad. Um, so right at the top of the right hand side you can see a section called who's got my money um, and it is basically showing uh, in red what is overdue and in green what is not yet due. Uh, yellow is disputed invoices and blue is uh, non-allocated cash at the present moment in time. So that's the top right hand corner, the bottom left hand corner we can see the whole of our debtor situation uh, split out between what is uh, allocated, what is overdue, uh, what is not yet due, and indeed what is disputed. Above that, to the left, we have um, the detail behind the various disputes that we've got running. And to the right of that, any diary calls that we've got scheduled for today and going forward as you would expect from any credit control uh, program. Uh, you have a mini age debt showing you what's current and broken down in the way that you would expect to see it. And if we wish to see all the detail behind that, then we have up on the uh, menu bar, the ribbon bar at the top, uh, a proper age debt report that we can very, very quickly run. Um, and promise cash so that if the question is asked, you know, what is coming in this week, next week in a sort of tight end of month situation, um, then we can very, very quickly say, look, we've had these amounts promised, blah, 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 blah. And perhaps the financial controller, financial director can be reassured that uh, the money is indeed coming in. So I'm going to take you, as promised, to, to chase an invoice. And we're going to uh, look at uh, the company here, Festival Homes. And uh, if I just double click on the, uh, the red part of Festival Homes, it will take me into their invoice and collection part. Now let me describe this screen for you. The top part is the invoice information that's pulled out from NAV. So our invoice number, any, any external references, the dates of the invoice, due dates, overdue dates, currency, amount, all the stuff that's brought to standard from the, uh, the uh, NAV system. Um, and the, over on the right, we have some icons which basically very, very quickly can show us whether uh, promises have been made for payments, whether there are any disputes, and indeed uh, any history associated. And on this particular line that I'm looking at at the moment, the top line, you can see that we have some history associated with that. But the invoice that's caught my attention this morning is this one, number 4606. Nothing appears to have happened to it, and we seem to be 31 days overdue. So I'm going to click on that invoice, and indeed you can see straight away there is no history associated with it. The process is to start a chase, and the chase time, the quality time that we spend with the customer, 
on the phone um, is is monitored um, just so that we have an idea uh, what's going on how long all the the catch up is taking us so the process starts with clicking on the start chase and immediately brings up a diary entry screen so these are other issues that we have uh, with the festival and I'm just going to skip through those for now um, so that I can show you the process itself. So here we have um, some notes about the festival, uh, what the current situation is. So this is the pie chart as it applies to festival. Clearly a large chunk of red here of overdue. And in my account notes, you can see that I've already commented that these guys are perpetual slow payers. We have a notepad here. Um, and we have to the bottom of that, on the left-hand side, the list of reasons that customers might give us for non-payment. Um, these are uh, standard out of the box, but it becomes very easy to add any of your own. And on the right-hand side, um, for each of those uh, uh, objections, if you like, or reasons for non-payment, then basically uh, our response is what we can suggest to perhaps try and edge the customer over the top to, to make a payment. Now, the issue that's been reported for this particular instance is uh, an invoice uh, not on the system. And indeed, um, I follow that up now and can, as credit controller can make some notes about this. So, uh, invoice not received. And these go, these go into um, the file that's saved away. Um, confirmed that the goods have arrived. Um, send copy invoice immediately. Um, I will miss the uh, 13th to the 7th, 12 payment run. but we'll make the 20th. Believe you me, I've asked for a manual check before this. Um, just to add salt uh, to the wound, really, um, pay, um, the mail will be second class. So I've made the comments there, there piled away and what we can just do here is this is the amount that's uh, in effect been promised um, and what we can do here is we can use the calendar now if I send a copy invoice today I've already been told I'll miss the 13th so I'll make the 20th it'll get sent second class so the odds are nothing's going to happen much um, before the 25th so I'm going to click on the 25th to say this has been promised for the 25th I'm going to create a reminder in the system and um, I'm going to assign this away so that we can uh, be sure to pick this up later. So click on that and I'm going to stop the chase. And as I stop the chase, it then kicks in with a workflow which allows me if I want either to discard the chase or to finish it off. And finishing it off is basically sending a series of reminder letters. So follow-up letters that we've got set up in the system that can quickly be sent out to the customer. So uh, follow-up letter one, I can preview it if I wish, uh, but time precludes that. So I'll click on next. Um, there are no disputes involved here, uh, so I just go straight to finish. Now the finish process writes the letter to Maureen Duffy of Festival Homes and this is a draft of that letter. And um, just very, very quickly, I'm just going to send that out to my uh, email and that will go off to, to my Outlook and be sent. And this is the process of taking this draft uh, letter, uh, making a PDF of it, putting the uh, template over it and putting it in my Outlook box. Now this will be sent automatically, but I have on this occasion trapped it. Um, so it's sitting here in my uh, draft uh, Outlook. And if I open that up, 
you'll see that what we have is a very nice email, very colorful email, incidentally. Um, just a covering note here for uh, festival homes. But the key thing is the letter that goes behind that, which is now as a PDF. I'm opening for you here. Um, so, dear Maureen Duffy, um, these are the details. Effectively, the amount has been promised for the 25th of July. Any issues, call me. This is my number, my fax, my email, and um, a rather flattened signature, but we won't worry about that for the moment. Um, and indeed, a copy invoice that automatically has, has gone with that, that document. So going back to um, our credit hound here, um, we'll just shut down that preview. And so we can see that we have sent our, our first dispute, our first um, uh, chase invoice. Disputing invoices, very, very similar sort of a process. Again, festival homes. So again, to that same start screen. Um, but this time the issue is down towards the bottom where we have a situation, invoice 4834, where the goods have not arrived. And I'm going to start the chase process again. Click through, continue chase. Um, and then on that particular invoice, I'm going to right click and add a dispute. This kicks off another process uh, and I'm going to select goods not received. So there are notes for the client and there are notes to process internally. And client notes basically say invoice received, but goods not arrived. And in my internal notes, I happen to know that this was possibly the day that the lorry broke down. So uh, was this the day the lorry broke down? Um, do we send a credit? Hope not. Or do we um, have plans to ship? We have a dispute reference, which we can give to the customer. Um, summary of the dispute. We have two dates. We have a resolution date, which we've set here for the 16th of July, and a review date two days later, so that we can be sure that, that everything happens. And internally, we need to assign this dispute. So we're going to sign, assign it to the warehouse manager. And we're also going to copy in David Owens here, who's our customer services manager. And so perhaps no sooner have we come off the phone that we can click save and close. The process kicks off behind the scenes to uh, put the letters together. And very shortly, we'll stop the chase and finish. And we have no reminder letters, but we do this time have dispute notification and a dispute report letter. And we can just finish those off. The letter to um, uh, Festival Homes is there in draft mode, and we'll get that sent on its way. Um, and the next stage after that is to generate behind the scenes the letter to the internally copy for David Owens, uh, customer services manager, um, details of the issue, the internal notes. Uh, and then below that, a copy uh, for the warehouse manager sitting there. And again, we'll make sure those go out. Those are the drafts. And if I look um, at my outlook, you'll see that those are there now. So um, to Festival Homes, um, nice colorful covering email. But if I open it up, then we have dispute notification outlining the issues, who's taking care of it, when we're going to resolve it, and who to contact if there are any issues. Similarly, um, internally, um, just take uh, Gary from the warehouse, dispute for you to resolve. So it's clear that he's got ownership of this. Summary of the situation on the header and a copy of the dispute uh, in the background. So every, all the documentation, everything is in place for, for this to be handled across the system. 
the next stage of this is to show you the calendar screen because this is very important for how this works. Um, I've got a lot of things to do later on as some of these are overdue. Um, but what we're showing here is basically all the actions that, that need to be taken in the weeks or days ahead. Um, and these are all linked to the various disputes of the system. Now, what will happen before some of these events come to pass is that some of these outstanding invoices will get paid. And we have the functionality here to auto-complete. And if we press that, it goes back to the NAV database and it will remove any diary entries relating to transactions that have already uh, been allocated and paid. So we're not going to waste our time making up follow-up calls or whatever for incidents that have already been sorted. So if I just look at this just very, very quickly, um, having a look down here, um, we have uh, the uh, issue on the 25th, if you remember, of, of um, the uh, invoice uh, not received. This is when we expect to get the money in from um, Maureen Duffy. Now, obviously, that will stay there until the money is received. If the money is received before then, that will simply disappear off the menu. So we have that very useful functionality that makes us work very, very well and efficiently indeed. I'm going to introduce you to um, the rules functionality here. Um, and this is the beginning of the virtual credit controller where we can effectively have uh, letters in the background or whatever, um, very mild letter, preemptive letter. We have criteria down the left-hand side showing us how to, uh, what the rules are in terms of sending this. It's going to be sent between five, minus five and one day of due payment. There has to be a balance greater than pound, so on and so forth. Um, and what we have then is, assuming all of those criteria met, a series of rules. So in this instance, it's just going to write a letter. Now I'm going to amend that slightly um, because I'm going to uh, ask it to also write a diary entry. And I'm going to click on OK for that. And I'm going to say, OK, if this is going five days beforehand, I'll give a cooling off period of two days so that if nothing happens, um, I will follow this up. Uh, basically three days before the due date with a phone call. Um, and I've added that now and I can click on OK. And what I can then do is actually run that rule. And what the system does is it's gone away and identified all my outstanding uh, invoices that are due for payment uh, effectively in the next five days. Uh, I can switch off some of these which uh, I don't want to send for whatever reason. Um, and then click on OK. And behind the scenes then the system will immediately start sending these draft letters um, and I will just send them straight to, to my Outlook. Now this process would normally be automated um, behind the scenes. So all of that works and gets sent off and just let that generate all the letters. And what we'll see now, if I go to my Outlook, are effectively all the reminder letters to, to go out. And we'll just pick on one here for Holstead Home Builders, nice colourful header. And here indeed is the letter itself. So outlining the invoices that are due for payment, um, our bank details, what to do if there's any problems, and all the, the good things that you might expect for a, a programme like this too. To have. So I'm going to um, just quickly uh, go back into um, Credit Hound here. We'll just close this down. It'll tell me that the rules have completed successfully. And indeed, what will then happen is I refresh the screen is a lot of those diary entries will then be updated into the system. So moving on from our uh, credit hound, we want to look at some of the hard benefits that we uh, have from using credit hound. 
And the key points here are to make are effectively what is saved in terms of cash and what the costs are in terms of the business. Um, so if it's just a relatively small uh, uh, four and a half million pound turnover business can reduce its average debtor days just by 10 days, say in this instance, 51 to 41 days. Um, the cash that would come to the business notionally would be some 123,000 pounds worth of cash coming back into the business uh, for use for investment or for any other purposes, uh, reducing debtors, whatever it might be, or reducing creditors, whatever it might be. Um, and then the notional cost of the company, assuming that the company is financed by uh, overdraft function, um, would be something of the order of £8,000 a year. So the, the savings can be, be quite um, substantial and it's important all the way through to, to understand what those might be. So I want to thank you for, for listening. Um, the whole idea of Credit Hound is about uh, getting paid faster and reducing those debtor days, reducing long-term overdue balances, improving access to working capital, faster dispute resolution, and removing all of those reasons that customers may have for non-payment. Additionally, we have the issue of good credit management, uh, reducing external, de uh, reducing dependency on external funding, and effectively reducing risk to the company. So thank you for that. And if you have any questions, please email me at john.gardner at cosl.co.uk. Um, for more information, um, the uh, website where everything is kept is uh, webdracer.com and click on Credit Hound. And you're very warmly invited to join our Credit Hound workshop, which we're going to run on Thursday, the 12th of July. Um, it will be a morning session. Uh, Dracer, the authors of the software, will be with us that day. And we will be working our way uh, slightly less hurriedly, I might add, through much of the functionality that Credit Hound offers. Our next coffee break will be on Thursday, the 19th of July at 10.30, and we will be sending invitations to you for that. And the topic then will be introducing Jet Enterprise. So this is the, uh, the add-on, the uh, upgrade, if you like, to the very, very successful Jet Essentials 2012. So with that, thank you very, very much indeed for, for watching and listening. Um, I hope we've um, shown you something that will be of interest, and we look forward to hearing from you very, very shortly. So thank you again for your time. Um, and if you, as I say, if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate. Uh, all the details are there on the page. So thank you, and goodbye.